tonight how to become recession proof everybody's talking about the recession we're going to be discussing tonight how to become recession proof because such a thing is possible i also want to mention guys that i'm not some sort of recession maniac i'm not one of those guys that likes to put bad news and push bad news down people's throats i really actually don't like it i actually like when the world is full of in hebrew we would say bar chava is full of uh, full of money, full of flow, full of business, full of abundance. That's what I personally like. Um, but we have to deal with the times. You know, there's such a concept in Torah. In the Bible, it says that Joseph had seven good years and he had two bad years. So we've got to deal with that. And Joseph made all of his money in those two bad years. So we're going to be discussing how to weather that storm tonight. We're going to be discussing how to come out on top because you, yes, you watching right now. Thank you for joining. By the way, I love you. Thank you, Instagram. Thank you, LinkedIn. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you for being here. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. Thank you, Moshe Berkowitz. I appreciate you. Thank you, Lucy Napolitano. Um, thank you, Blair Yosef. Rabbi Raps in the house. All right. If you're just joining, we're discussing... How to become recession-proof because such a thing is absolutely 100% possible. And you and I are going to achieve that today. So first, let's understand what a recession is. It is when the economy slows down. Now, the definition and the newspaper and the however the White House and the evil people want to spin it in the White House. That's their business. Biden sucks. We need a Republican government in town. The Democrats have no idea how to run a country whatsoever. But we are going to be, <laughs> while they're screwing up the economy, we're going to be discussing what you could do to make sure that you are bulletproof through this entire thing. So here we go. So the last time that this happened, the last major recession was in 2008 and 2009. It's when the housing crisis, when the housing market collapsed in the United States. And that had a ripple effect against the entire world. You have to understand that the United States is the absolute economic machine of the world. Today, it's becoming more and more China. But, you have to, but still, more or less, it's the United States that really runs the show. So when the States is having a hiccup, when the States gets a sneeze, has a sniffle, it causes a ripple effect on the entire world. Now we're experiencing a recession I don't want to go too much into the reasons why, because it doesn't really matter. But just so you understand on one foot, for the past three years, they've been pumping money artificially into the system. Governments everywhere were pumping money to try to get your vote, to try to get you to stay home, to try to keep you at bay. And they were handing out checks indiscriminately. So it was fake money being printed. That's what caused the inflation. Then what happened was the system got used to receiving this fake money. And what happened now is that the money stopped being printed. So the world is going into a almost like a, um, a recession. It's almost like drinking caffeine, and then all of a sudden, you cut off the caffeine. You're going to feel the effects of it. So there was companies that had massive amounts of money. People, people had massive amounts of money in the United States. They were handing out these SBA loans. They were handing out PPP loans. They were handing out all kinds of loans, free money. Everybody thought, wow, let me get as much money as I could. And they were smart. They were smart to get as much money as they could. But the problem is, is that that now free flow of money is now about to run out. So the question is, is how do you and I protect ourselves? What can we do to ensure that we end up on top? Because I'm not going down. You know, during the pandemic, everybody said, this made me laugh. We're in this together. <laughs> I wasn't in it together. I was in it to win it. The pandemic hit. I said, I got to completely change my gear over here. I got to completely change the way I do things. I cut all my expenses and I found any business that I could get into. During one point in the pandemic, I was selling bull pizzle. Do you know what bull pizzle is? It is the penis of bulls, okay? And I was selling it to dog chew toy manufacturers. Why? Because everybody canceled their dog chewy orders. I had a client who had bull pizzle and I sold that to dog to manufacturers, anything I could do to keep the lights on. I made more money with God's help. Thank you to the one above. I made more money during COVID than I ever had made in my entire life. Why? Because everybody gave up. And your boy, Big B, was not willing to give up. And neither are you. I'm not going to let you. You're too good. You're too good. It's expensive to live today. We've got to figure out how to gain, how to gain, how to, how to think with an abundant mentality, not think how to shrink. 
So lesson number one, here we go. Lesson number uno, numero uno. Habla espanol, si habla espanol in me. Social media, te amo. I love you. <laughs> lesson number one when it comes to a recession is you do not want to shrink. Shrinking is for losers and you do not want to lose. During the recession, you have to expand. You have to grow. You have to think outside of your box. You have to think outside of what is the realm that you were doing before, the realm of possibility. Because in your renovation business, let's say, if you were used to getting 10 clients or 12 clients a year, right, one a month, you have to understand now people are actually calculating. Everybody's going into contraction mode. So people are less likely to spend money. Look at the housing market. It went from absolutely hot like crazy to absolutely slow. Why? Because people are scared. When people are scared, they hang on to their cash. They don't want to give up their money. So the same guy that was used to getting 12 contracts in his renovation business, now automatically the market will cut you in half. The market is going to say, nah, -uh. only six people now a year are willing to be are willing to be, get their houses remodeled, let's just say, in your normal business. So that means you have to double your effort just in order to be at the number 12 like you were before. You see what I mean? So you have to up the level of action that you were at before just to sit and make the same amount of money, just to make the same amount of contracts. But here's where it gets fun. Your biggest competitor was not told this advice because they didn't sign into my life. So just like, let me give you an example, okay? I'll tell you why traffic jams happen. Most traffic jams are caused by when there's an elevation in the highway. Let me explain to you. People have their foot on the gas and they're used to keeping it at a certain level and they're not calculating the elevation in the highway. So what happens, even though their foot is on the gas and they're going 100 kilometers an hour, 100 miles an hour, as soon as they hit that bump, their car automatically goes down to 90 or 80 kilometers per hour. And what happens is because they slow down, everybody behind them slows down. And the first guy hits on his brakes, and then the second guy hits on his brakes, and the third and the fourth and the fifth, until you have that ripple effect, 10,000 cars down 10 kilometers down the highway. Why? Because the first schmo did not anticipate the raise and elevation of the highway. Had he just hit a little bit harder on the gas, he would have been able to maintain his speed and made it over the bump while everybody behind him was stuck in the traffic jam. And that is how to get over. That is how we will get over the hump of the recession. I'm not scared of it. Bring it on. I'm ready for the recession, baby. I'm ready. I'm ready. You got to push on the gas. You got to push on the gas harder right now than you've ever pushed before to make it over that hump. Why? Because there is an incline that is coming. That incline is here. They announced it. You could bury your head in the sand, or you could say, hey, I'm going to read the data. Of course, of course, by the way, of course, God runs the world. So even if there was a recession, and even if there was a depression, and even if there was a great depression, and even if everything went to hell in a handbasket, and there was nuclear war, God forbid, you would still be okay because God runs the world. So first and foremost, let's just first of all establish that recession, no recession, depression, no depression. God runs the world. So we're going to be okay. But God wants us to work within the natural order. And the natural order of things, again, let's just look at, let's just study the first recession in the Bible, in the Torah. The very first recession that there ever was, was when Joseph was in Egypt, and there was a famine in Egypt, and Joseph had to collect all of the grain. And once, if, once he flipped the switch, once the famine hit in Egypt, Joseph flipped the switch. He became like, he became a business machine. He opened up the storehouses, started selling like a madman, started taking people's lands. He would buy, they, they ran out of money to buy his grain. He would buy their land and he would displace them. He turned into a machine, and we have to learn from this, and now you have to turn into a machine. If you are used to coasting, the coast is over. So practically speaking, what does that mean tomorrow morning for you and for me? What does it mean? It's very nice to say, hustle, hustle, hustle. I hate these guys that say, hustle hard. What does that mean, practically speaking? So number one, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't know if you can handle it, but I'm going to tell it to you anyways, okay? I love you. 
I love you guys, but sometimes the truth, you can't handle it. But I'm going to tell it to you. Whew, I need some water. I'm going to tell you the truth. The truth is this. Social media is the biggest gift that was ever given to you and to me in our businesses. It used to be, you used to be able to build your business without it. I cannot understand today how people do business without social media. I'm sitting here in Panama, in Latin America. I'm in the opportunity sector, I feel, of the world. And I started from absolutely scratch here. And as I went in, I started knocking on doors, looking for opportunity. By the way, that's another thing. You got to knock. You got to look for opportunity. You got to find your bull pizzle. You got to find your masks. You got to find your opportunity, your business. Everything has to be open right now. You have to go wide, don't go narrow. During, the, during when everything is great and everything is flowing, great, go narrow, focus. Now that things are, now that things are tightening up, you got to go wide. You got to see what else, how else can I make money? How else could I bring in revenue? Another 10,000, another 30,000, another 300 bucks if that's where you're holding. Another 300,000, where could I bring in that money? Bang, 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 bang. Now it's time to start banking that money. By the way, our coaches in my company, shameless plug, and wealthy executive coaching, this is what we do all day, every day. We're in your ear. Number one thing that you need, and we're going to get back to the social media, you need positivity. You need somebody pumping you up. The first time that I got my coach was during COVID-19 in the very beginning when it knocked me on my butt mentally. All right. I don't believe, I didn't believe in the whole thing physically. COVID was a cold. It was a really bad cold, maybe a flu. Yes, some people got sick and died, but some people get sick and die in car crashes. So I don't, I'm not buying it. But in the beginning, when everybody was mental about it and I became mental with them, it messed with my brain. I hired a coach to keep me straight in my head. That coach is what allowed me to build like I had never built before in my life, would turn me into a rock star. We do this all day, every day. If you want a free consultation, please reach out to me, DM me. I'm happy to discuss it with you, and my office will set up a call between you and me. Send me a direct message or leave a comment, and my office will get in touch. End of shameless plug. Let's go. Social media. I landed in the middle of a banana republic. It's a third world freaking country. But I walked in, and I am the man. You know why? Because everybody knows who I am. You know the song, everybody knows your name. Wherever you go, you want people to know who you are. When I knock on the door, people pick up the phone. They say, whoa, Beryl Solomon wants to get... I got on the phone today with a guy. The guy's probably worth $300 million a year. His company does a billion dollars. No, sorry. Today, I spoke to three guys. Between all of them, each one of their companies does a billion dollars. The owners of the company. And I was able to get on the phone with them. Why? Because I'm in their face every day. Their children watch me. They watch me. I show up on their LinkedIn. I show up on their Instagram. They already know who I am. I have no idea who they are. But they know who I am. Right now, more than ever, you need the world to know you. You need the world to flow you. You need opportunities. You need abundance. So that the world could flow to you instead of you contracting. So let's go over, okay? We spoke about a lot tonight. Let's go over. I don't want you to get lost. Don't get lost with me, people. Don't get lost. <sighs> Number one, during a recession, you do not want to contract. You want to expand. A, an example of contracting is spending less, shutting down, conserving. You don't want to go into conservation mode. That is the wrong thing to do. You want to go into expansion mode mode right now? How do I open up new opportunities? How do I bring new forms of income into my life? How do I open up new markets, new products, new services, new clients, new, 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 bang, 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 bang. Sorry, I get excited when I talk about this stuff. Guys, I usually don't drink from a, what's it called? A bottle. I usually drink from a, a glass, but please forgive me. I don't have one here and I'm a little hoarse. L'chaim. Let's keep on going. No contraction, only expansion. New forms of revenue. Back to our guy, by the way. Back to our contractor who's used to 12 clients a year. Now if he's down to six and he only is re remodeling six kitchens a year and he refused to do bathrooms when things were good, now he has to say to himself, maybe I should do bathrooms. 
And when he refused to do, let's just say, for argument's sake, warehouses, to build warehouses, now he has to think to himself, well, maybe I should look at warehouses now. Because that's where the opportunity is. Because everybody's trying to get into the Amazon business because COVID shut down retail. I think forever. I think retailers will slowly dwindle out. I don't buy anything from retail anymore. So maybe the construction guy, remember back to our guy who did 12 a year. Now he's down to six. Now maybe he finds his new opportunity. He never looked at warehouses before because he was so busy in the mud with his regular kitchens. Now he's going to say, look, maybe there's opportunity within warehouses. You see what I mean? You got to look for opportunity right now. No contraction, only expansion. So that was number one. Number two is social media is your friend. If you have LinkedIn, personally, guys, I mean, I love you dearly on, on Instagram. Don't get me wrong. YouTube, I think you're the best. But LinkedIn is where I get all of my contracts. 90% of the money that I make in my life, Hashem, God sends to me through LinkedIn. And by the way, nobody gives me contract on LinkedIn. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it wrong. Okay. But when I walk into a trade show, when I walk into a conference, everybody knows my face. They say, aren't you that guy? I say, yes, I am, sir. Let's talk. How can we do some business? All right. So <laughs> you got to know, people got to know you. People got to, no contracting, Number two is people got to know you. Number three is you have to be open for opportunity. You got to be hungry for opportunity. Number four is you got to show up. You got to show up to blow up. One of my clients, his name is Robert Rezac. Guy's a maverick. Okay, Robbie, if you're watching this, I love you. The guy owns a cosmetics, huge distribution company. He owns an electronics, huge distribution company. A perfume, humongous distribution company. The guy gave me one piece of advice that sticks with me every day. He says, you got to show up. You got to show up to blow up. I'm going to be announced. I'll just give you an example of how I do these things, okay? I'll give you an example. And I know that it says that there's blessing when people are quiet, but you know what? There's such a concept, by the way, in the Torah. There's such a concept that says that you have, a, you have blessing when things are quiet. Meaning when nobody knows anything, that's when you have blessing. And I'm sure it's true because the Torah says it. But I feel that I have a responsibility to tell you guys these things because what I've noticed is, is that rich people don't like to share. They just don't. They don't like to share their knowledge. I mean, they're charitable, but they don't like to share their knowledge. They feel like it's bragging or something. I think it's such BS. You know, making a movie now um, called In God We Test about the power of giving charity. And you cannot imagine how difficult it was to get rich people to be on this film. I mean, nobody wanted to be on the film. It's like, as soon as you get to a certain level of wealth, people absolutely shut down. And I understand because they're scared of the evil eye. They're scared of people finding out their secrets. They're scared of looking ostentatious or bragging. Um, so I totally get it in a certain sense, but I'm going to tell you everything and I'm doing it because I feel responsible for people's livelihoods. I can't tell you why. Ever since I was a kid, people's livelihoods were like so important to me that people should make a good livelihood. It's so important to have peace in your home. It's so important for our kids. It's so important for our communities. It's so important for men's self-worth. I can't speak for women. I never was one. Um, but for men, I know for sure that being connected and being successful financially is so connected to your personal self-worth. So I'm just going to tell you an example of showing up. That was all a prelude to give myself to give myself permission on to give you an example of how to show up. So there's something in Panama called the free zone, okay? In Panama, it's where everybody makes, not everybody, but most of the people in Panama, the Jewish community, make their money from something called Zone Libre, the free zone. And for years, I've been coming to Panama and I've been hearing about the free zone, the free zone, the free zone. I know that's where money is. I know that's where deals happen. I know that's where people um, contract, interact. So I said to myself, I'm going to the free zone. I had no plan. I had no connections. I had one guy that lives in my building that I told him I want to come with him. And he said he's going to help me make meetings while I'm there. I hopped into the car with him last week. 
he's making calls and I'm asking him, you know, please reminding him, please make calls for me so that I can meet people while I'm there. I don't know what's going to happen. I just want to meet people. There's another secret, guys. People have everything that you want. Everything that you want is in the hands of somebody else. Rich people, by the way. Poor people, give them charity. Be their friend. Be there for them. Talk to them emotionally. When it comes to business, you interact with rich people. I say this all the time. You cannot squeeze. Finish my sentence if you've been watching me for any amount of time. You cannot squeeze water from a rock. Okay? You want to interact with rich people. So I, I follow the money. I'm in Panama. The rich people are all in the free zone. That's where they make their living. The free zone is a place where there's no tax. It's a tax haven. It's the second largest free zone outside of Hong Kong. Is right here in Panama because there's a canal. So people unload, they unload their boats. They're, they unload shipments in the free zone and they ship from Panama to all over the world. So I know this is where people transact. I know this is where money deals happen. And guess where Big B is? In the money, baby. And that's where you want to be too. You want to be in the damn money. Okay? So I get in the car. I'm on my way to the free zone. I don't have a plan. I don't have contacts. I don't have anything. I show up. I go to the first meeting. I get a tour. I'm learning. I'm meeting. I'm shaking hands. I show up. There's a prayer service in the middle of the afternoon. The, little, the Jewish community there has a little room where they make a prayer service. Guess what? Somebody recognizes me from Instagram. He watched my movie and he says, Beryl, could you please say a few words in front of the congregation? So guess what? Big B showed up because if they don't know me, they can't flow me. So I say to myself, wow, I get free marketing, free advertising. Bam. I get in front of the get in front of everybody. I come up with something. I pull it out of the air. Guys, if God gives you an opportunity, you take that opportunity. All right. You take that and you 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 take like you you split the bones and you suck the marrow out of them. Every last drop. I was given an opportunity. I took that damn opportunity. Everybody knows my name in the free zone today. So while I was there, I came up with an idea. You're going to see me launch it. You're going to say, oh, in like a week or two, you're going to say, wow, Beryl mentioned this on his live. I remember when he mentioned it. So cool that he actually put it into fruition because I put things into action. I put things into traction. So I show up. Everybody knows my name. And my idea that I have there is none of the businesses there are doing any type of business with North America. I guess they have enough with Mexico, with Chile, with Argentina, with Uruguay, with Venezuela. So they don't need, they don't, or they don't have access to the North American market. Guess who has access to the North American market? Your boy, Big B. So I say to everybody, hey, I have a good idea. Everybody that I shook hands with, right? I'm touring these places. You cannot imagine the scope, the grandiose <laughs> they have these showrooms. It looks like it looks like you're in a department store, but you're in their showroom, but you can't buy anything it, because everything in the room, there's no cashier, but everything in the room represents 10,000 pieces of that shirt, of that iron, of that Frisbee, of that soccer ball, of that electronic, whatever it is. So here's my idea. I have tons of access to North America. Because I built, with God's help, this incredible social media machine, which you could start doing today, right tonight. You could literally make a post, screenshot this video that I'm doing and say, hey, I joined a great class tonight. Bang! You were in everybody's face. Or you could make a video tomorrow about your art or about your law firm or about your home bakery or about your import-export business or about whatever the heck it is that you do. You should tell the world about that tonight. Tonight, don't wait. So I have access to North American markets. So here's the idea. Here's what we're going to do. And again, technically, I should keep it quiet. It says when you keep things quiet, you have bracha, blessing. But I'm only telling you this because it's my responsibility to tell you this. So in a week or two, I'm going to make a video. And here's the concept. We are going to pay for people's flights from North America. We are going, buyers, big buyers, we're going to pay for buyers' flights from North America. We are going to pay for their hotels. We are going to pick them up from the airport in black limousine Cadillac stretch because that's the way I roll. 
and we're going to drive those people to the free zone for them to do business and to buy with the sellers in the free zone. I'm going to have a 5% cut of whatever is sold in the free zone. So why am I telling you this? I mean, this is all with God's help. Please, God, give me a blessing in this business. I give a lot of charity with the money. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this as an example to show up. Is it going to work? I don't know. But you know what's, going, you know what's not going to work if I don't try it? You have to try. You have to show up. You have to. I see some people. Shawana B. I want in. Genovese Wall Street, effing legend. I love you too, buddy. The point is that you got to show up. You think I knew what I was going to get myself into when I walked into the free zone? You think I knew I was going to meet the people? You think I knew I was going to give the speech in the synagogue? You think I knew that I was going to find this opportunity? But I showed up. You got to show up to blow up, ladies and gentlemen. Your face. Showing up in that door is so powerful. Tomorrow morning, whatever showing up means for you, you show up. You don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to have the plan. You don't have to have the end goal. You don't even have to have it work. But you got to try. The more I try, the more I succeed. The more I try, the more I win. By the way, I want to tell you something too. Brace yourself. Brace yourself. The more you try the more you're going to fail. You know how many times I fail a day? You know how many times? Are you sick? You know how many times I strike out in a day? Do you know how much pain I have in an average day? You know, I once, I once, <laughs> Mark Levy, we need to know. I love you too. Um, <laughs> I have so much pain in a day because I strike out so many times a day. I mean, ungodly amount of times I strike out. I had a kid today. He's a friend of mine. He's probably watching this right now. I love you. I'm so proud of you. I'm going to tell your story. He's looking to get into a new business because the current job that he has is a little shaky. And I said to him, hey, we designed a product together and I told him to go pitch this company. And it was the first pitch he ever made or one of the first pitches he ever made. And he got shut down hard. And he called me and I heard in his voice, he sounded a little dejected. And I said to him, congratulations, baby. You just got your first rejection. Welcome to the club. You just became a man, all right? And he didn't understand it really, but the ability to be shut down and the ability to get back up is literally a freaking superpower. And by, by the way, don't get me wrong. I hate failing. Ugh, I love having a coach. Every time I fail, I call my coach. Poor lady. She's on the phone with me eight times a day. And God bless you so much, by the way, if you're watching. God bless you so much for being there with me. I appreciate you so much. I fail so many times a day. And <laughs> thank you, Mindy Mackie. You're legendary too. Thank you. I fail so many times a day. But the failure, the success cannot happen without the failure. I literally, nine out of 10 things that I do fail. Do you guys realize that? Do you guys realize nine out of 10 things that I do fail? And you're sad that you had your one little failure. So you crawled back into your room. You put the covers over your head and you hope for the best. You have to love failure. You have to love being shut down. You have to love a realtor deal. Can't wait to watch a new documentary. Thank you, by the way. Guys, I have a new movie coming out. You got to check it out. You guys got to love to fail. I just want to give a few shout outs here before we keep on going forward. Jakob Yarmish, I love you, buddy. Brian, thank you for being here. Um, Mahmoud, Animo, Eddie Shabbat, um, Dan Phillips, Christina, Kendall Little Rarma. Um, love you guys. You guys are awesome. Okay, let's keep on going. Um, by the way, I have this guy here at Geneva C. Wall Street. Um, he's on the live right now, he's on Instagram. I don't want to embarrass you right now, buddy, but this guy is a freaking maverick, okay? He is a business genius, all right? And he built his business with his blood, his sweat, and tears. Guys, you're going to sweat. You're going to sweat, but you have to sweat. Those who are willing to, you know, you know what really bothers me? I'll tell you what really bothers me. 
when people make it look easy. And I owe you actually, I, I, I owe you guys all an apology. I'm sorry. Let me tell you for what. I put that post out last week. You may have seen it. With this year, thank you, God, I gave a quarter of a million dollars to charity. And I made it look easy. And it wasn't nice. It wasn't fair. It wasn't fair to you. And it wasn't fair to me. Because I made it seem like it was easy to give that quarter million dollars to charity. I made it seem like it, like it ain't no thing. Let me tell you something. That was the hardest, I don't want to say most disgusting situation. Because that's a hard word. Um, that was one of the hardest things that I ever had to do. And I sweat and I stressed and my faith in God was shaken so many times. And my business, because I was trying so many new things in business to try to make that happen, I got shut down so many times. I went into so many new industries. I got hurt and burnt and my ego was killed so many times in the pursuit of the ability to give that quarter million dollars to charity. And I apologize to you for making it look easy because that probably made you feel bad. And I apologize to me because it wasn't fair to me. It didn't do justice to me. You know how hard I worked, guys? I could cry thinking about how, how hard I worked. I could cry about it. So going back, going back into our original theme of the night, which is how to become recession-proof. The answer is really how to become bulletproof. What do bulletproof people have? They have a bulletproof vest. And when you get shot wearing a bulletproof vest, it hurts. It hurts like hell. Okay? It hurts. But it won't kill you. And because it doesn't kill you, you can rise another day. And that's what I need from you. And that's how to survive a recession is to put on a bulletproof vest. And every single day, take those shots, bang, 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 bang. And to get up, and to get up and continue to, be, to build and to go forward. And that's really what it takes to become recession-proof. And the most successful people in this world, they won't tell you that. Because, again, I said it before, it's not nice. And I hope that I, don't, I, don't, I, I, hope that I never become that guy. I hope I always stay a man of the people. But most people, when they become successful, they slip under the rug. They don't want to be part of the people anymore. I want to be part of the people. I want to be, part of the, I want to be a man of the people. And I'll always share with you and I'll always let you know what I'm, what, what's good, what's not good. So if you're watching this right now, if you made it, if you made it this far, I want to first tell you that you're an absolute rock star. You're an absolute rock star and I appreciate you for this. I appreciate you for being here. You could have been watching Netflix. You could have been watching, you could have been watching pornography. You could have been wasting your life doing something stupid, getting drunk or smoking weed. Um, to all my buddies that smoke weed, I still love you. Don't worry. We'll talk about it later. But you're here with me at 9.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time learning how to become recession-proof. And you know what that makes you? It makes you a winner. And you know what that makes you? It means that tonight you showed up or whenever you find this live. It means that wherever you found yourself, you showed up tonight. And for that, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for showing up. So tomorrow morning... I want you to show up. You put on your bulletproof vest. You let the world know on social media or wherever trade show, wherever free zone or whatever it is that you got to walk into. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here. And I'm here to do business. And you get up and you go. And you trust the one above that he's going to bless you and all that it is that you do. Because at the end of the day, without him, we're nothing. Thank you, everybody, for being here with me. As usual, I'm going to stay here with Instagram. I'm going to let LinkedIn go and YouTube go because LinkedIn has not figured out yet how to bring people in live. So if you want to come live with me, please request it. Thank you so much for being here with me, LinkedIn. I love you dearly. You're the best.
you're the best. Let me just give a few shout out, shout outs on LinkedIn before everybody goes. Um, Ola from Argentina, thank you so much, Sterny, for being here. Sterny Friedman, Jakob Yarmish, Ellie Seinenfeld, when are you coming out of the, with a book? I should. Um, maybe you'll help me ghostwrite it. Yossi, thank you for being here with me. Paul Fair, thank you. Um, Elan, thank you. Lawrence Laddie, thank you. Simon Chakron, Moshi Tower, Paul Fair, Vladimir Dershbeck. Uh, you guys are awesome. Lauren Tam, thank you. And uh, Brian Goldman, I love you, buddy. Mahmoud Ahmed, Anito Ellis, Shabbat, thank you for being here. Bye, guys. Have a good night. Instagram.